Hello, I'm Squirrel. And I'm Rumble. And we are Cat Snacks and Video Games. Today, we'll be talking about physical Xbox 360 games and specifically some of the exclusives they have to offer. This is going to be part one of two. So grab a snack and let's get started. I guess starting off here, I'm looking at your stack over here and I I have a feeling people might get more excited seeing your games than my games today, but uh, you know, we'll see. <laughs> I think that there has been so many games that we've collected over the years, but I haven't, obviously I couldn't get around to all of them. And this is just a stack of some of the ones that I'm excited about. Now. Yeah, yeah. And then I, I give you absolutely full credit for this because I've been collecting on the 360 for a long time, but I never collected those types of games, so I'm, I'm excited to see them as well. Obviously, I was we picked them up together, but still, some of these, you know, I definitely haven't played. But uh, but to start off here, I'll, I'll go first then, if that's okay. Yeah. So the first game here is Akai Katana uh, or Red Sword. As you see here, this Red Sword right here. Uh, this is a shoot 'em up, uh, aka bullet hell shooter, as they call them. So this was developed by Cave and published by Rising Star Games. Uh, this game was actually released in the arcades uh, in 2010 first, and then it was ported to the 360 in Japan in 2011. And then uh, a year later, uh, Rising Star Games published this for um, uh, in North America and Europe. So that was pretty cool. Uh, read a little bit on the back here. Unleash the power of the blood katana the Empire's war has ravaged the world, and the people are suffering in its relentless pursuit of domination using the feared blood katanas. The sacrifices have been great, their deaths giving power to these blades. Do you have the strength to lead a small band of rebels to victory in the face of overwhelming odds? So yeah, this one, it's a pretty recent addition to our collection too. I, I kind of was waiting out for a good price here, uh, but there are remastered versions too on newer consoles that was uh, released in 2022 but still the 360 was the first and it's uh the only way you can get this on xbox physically as well uh, this game is not backwards compatible so you'll need a xbox 360 to play this particular version so that's pretty cool i was surprised to hear that that was a bullet hell shooter the covers of some of these japanese <laughs> yeah. bullet hell shooters that one looks like it would be an RPG. Yeah, I mean. no, I, I agree. <laughs> I, it does not look like it would be a shooter. Yeah, I totally agree. But they kind of do that maybe yeah. to entice people to play them, you know, like, because yeah. how else would you do the cover? Just like a bunch of bullets, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's something I forgot to read on the back here too, which I thought was uh, funny. Yeah, it says here, beautiful bullets, gorgeous artwork <laughs> presented in glorious HD and 16 by nine support. I thought that was so funny because it's like, in comparison to the <laughs> ugly bullets so like you know so that was funny okay um in uh i'm gonna just keep that up too let's read the back of the games i think sometimes you not just get a glimpse into the game yeah. but also you get a little funny tidbit sometimes. it's kind of like the manual everyone's like i need the manual i want to collect the manual but yeah. who reads the manual right <laughs> it's it's yeah yeah it's, but some of them are pretty cool um my first one is the last remnant and this one is made by Square Enix. It came out in 2008. It's a turn-based JRPG that's set in a fantasy world uh, with many different races, you know, similar to lots of different uh, Final Fantasy games. To me, the art style definitely reminds me more of the like Final Fantasy online uh, games. This one, you um, recruit people into your squads is what I was hearing about. And um, the unique squad-based battle system is what Kind of intrigued me about this one it is not backwards compatible and let's read the back here in ancient times mysterious artifacts referred to as remnants were discovered all over the world people used these objects for their awesome powers causing a rift in the world's balance war was inevitable a thousand years later is when the story begins and yeah, it says here that we're gonna control a party up to 25 characters simultaneously. And it has a critical trigger system that keeps you in the action. And this one has that metallic kind of look to uh, the cover here. 
That's crazy. 25 carrots. I can barely even control two if I had the option. But... <laughs> I'm guessing it's going to be a lot of AI, you know, NPC yeah, type okay. characters. But I know it sounded kind of interesting to me, too. Like It looks like you're actually going into war with your squad. So it's kind of cool. Yeah. If, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that might have been one of the first ones you picked up. Right? Yeah, I yeah. think it was. Mm -hmm. Is Because uh, that one, I, you know, it is an exclusive. It's not one that I can yeah. get on any other console. And it's a Square Enix RPG. I, I'm I'm interested. Yeah. Yeah, And at that point, I just followed your lead on the RPGs <laughs> on the 360 because I was like, I have no clue. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Next one I have is Bullet Witch. This is a third person shooter developed by Kavia and published by AQ Interactive in 2006. So it came out in Japan first. Uh, it was published by Atari a year later elsewhere. Um, so this one is, it says here there's a poster. Unfortunately, the copy that I bought a long time ago did not have the poster. So that's a bit of a shame, but it is complete otherwise. So, and it has like a cool reversible artwork uh, here as well. Um, and then if we move on to the back here, also, <laughs> I, I guess I ended up with these guys, right? So powerful magic, massive guns, extreme destruction, 2013 AD, humanity's dusk, countless demons walk the earth. Just before the loss of all hope, a woman appears. She wields the intense magic of a witch and a huge weapon, the gun rod. Her name, Alicia. <laughs> So yeah, there you go. So that's uh, that's that game. Uh, so this is not backwards compatible. So you'll need a 360 to play this uh, uh, this game right here. Um, I didn't know I was interested in that game, but after hearing you read that, now you've got to play it. You see, see that it. it's like it's like the uh, <laughs> back in the day when you read like. Uh, uh, old you know, movies and stuff. You read the back cover, and that this you made you decide yeah. on what you wanted to pick up that weekend. Yeah, you know? who cares so. about reviews? You're just yeah. like, <laughs> does the back this cover. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yep. Okay, the next one for me is Magna Carta 2 by Softmax and published by Bandai Namco. It came out in 2009. It's a real time JRPG battle system, and I was interested in this game years ago before we even bought it just because of the art style it caught my eye it stands out on the shelf it was a game that i really wanted to add to our collection so glad to have this one also i heard that it has a kind of a materia like final fantasy 7 materia like system that sounds interesting to me uh to play around with so yeah this one i do want to jump into it is not backwards compatible and it does have some dlc that was delisted a while ago uh so you'll miss out on some gamer score i guess if, yeah i if guess you're so yeah into that but let's see here reclaim the past and fight for the future in a war-torn kingdom, the fate of the world falls upon the shoulders of Juto, a young man with no knowledge of his past, and Zephy, the heir to the throne of the kingdom of Landsheim. And it's Blin's strategic turn-based battle and real-time gameplay, stunning photorealistic imagery, and character design by Hyung Tai Kim. And there we go, Magna Carta always been one i've been wanting to play so i should jump on that one yeah oh you're making me want to play it now with your narration there <laughs> in the back so <laughs> yeah but this one also got multiple releases i think multiple variants uh in japan i think we have the japanese one too yeah um, mm -hmm. there's a korean one i think and possibly a european one so mm -hmm. uh, but definitely a japanese one but um yeah cool all right next one i have is project Silphid. Arc of Deception. This is kind of like a space simulation aerial combat game. And I definitely know we picked this one up together because mm -hmm. we were just looking at this and like, well, it's Square Enix, but what is this? Yeah. You know, because we were kind of expecting a uh, uh, RPG or something, uh -huh. right? And yeah. just find out it's more of an aerial combat kind of game. So this is developed by SETA. And uh, like I said, uh, it's published by Square Enix in 2007. And it is complete as well. So, but I think this one definitely we uh, took this one home by the cover because we didn't know anything. But I was like, yeah. hey, I should probably pick this one up. You know, it's, uh, it's one of those games. Uh, and on the back here it says, Engaging Space Saga from Square Enix, makers of Final Fantasy and Kingdom Hearts. 
So that maybe sold it for us. <laughs> I, I'm guessing we're like, this is a space RPG. Yeah. <laughs> Interplanetary war tests the limits of friendship. So you have friends in this game, I think. So you um, test the limits. You're testing the limits in space and also on a personal level. So, <laughs> so this is this game is not backwards compatible. So yeah, again. Uh, you will need uh, you need a 360 to play it. So, <laughs> yeah, that one. I don't know. I'll be interested to see you play that one. Yeah. Square Enix space battle game. All right. Next is Infinite Undiscovery, a game that always captivated me just with the name alone. I have no idea what that means. Infinite Undiscovery, but I love it. So. This one was developed by Triace, the makers of the Star Ocean series, and published by Square Enix. It came out in 2008. It's a JRPG with real-time battle system, similar to the Star Ocean series. And this one has 18 recruitable characters, which I always think is fun because I am a fan of Chrono Cross game. And I, I love when you have a lot of characters that you get to know and you get to recruit. So this one sounds fun to me too. Um, it is, let's see on the back, a world eclipsed by chaos. The life-giving moon, the symbol of status and power to all who walk the planet, has been ensnared by the Order of Chain. Led by its enigmatic leader, the Dread Knight, the Order has constructed massive chains to lock the moon in its position in the heavens. The power of these chains spawns foul and deadly creatures that blight the land. Crops fail, trees wither, humanity cries out for salvation. Whoa. Yeah, whoa indeed. <laughs> Very dramatic. Mm -hmm. Well, that's how they get you. I mean, if you don't, if you don't have internet to look stuff up or watch a review, then that's how they get you. I feel like I'm going to be a real savior in that one. Yes, so. yes, I can't wait. <laughs> can't wait to see that. Okay, next, uh, I kind of double dipped a little bit here, but I felt like it was kind of the only way I could do this in a way because I'm more excited about the second one, but you know, I can't, I can you bypass. Can skip. No, I can't skip this one. No, exactly. <laughs> so, and that's 99 Nights. Uh, this is, uh, they're both kind of like role playing hack and slash games with like crowd combat scenario type big battlefields. Um, so, this one was published by Microsoft in 2006. So it's one of those early 360 games. Uh, this was physical only as well. So we picked this one up a very long time ago and uh, it's a very cool, you know, cool artwork and cool cover and uh, don't know what I expected of this when I picked it up, but it's just I saw Microsoft and I'm like, okay, well this was cheap. And so on the back here it says, a sweeping saga, an ancient betrayal, a battle to end all battles. Immerse yourself in exhilarating action, large-scale battles, and stunning visuals as you choose sides in the ultimate struggle between light and darkness. Experience this epic campaign through the eyes of seven different characters as you fight for good or evil to obtain the powerful Stone of Union. So there you go. So that's the first 99 nights. I always thought these games were going to be kind of similar to Dynasty Warriors, so I want I want to play them too. I like the Dynasty Warriors series. I think it's fun. And these look like they were almost more polished. I know people might hate that, but more polished graphics. Yeah. Wise. So, yeah. yes. Yeah, they might be. So, um, and here we have 99 Nights 2. This was uh, published by Konami in 2010. So, this is obviously the follow up. Uh, and this game also has a European, Japanese, Korean release. Um, and it's, um, I think it took us a while to find this one too. Like yeah. This was mm -hmm. uh, contrary to the first 99 Nights. This one took us a little bit to find, you know, a decent copy and everything and complete, but, but we finally got it. Uh, on the back here it says, when the nights begin, the darkness ends. Wage war against hundreds of on-screen enemies through online co-op. So this one added online co-op and just like you wanted hundreds of enemies on yeah, screen see, dynasty yeah. warriors mm -hmm. yeah so i'm i'd be curious to try this out i have uh, not really played uh games like this uh, before so and neither of these games uh the 99 nights games are backwards compatible so you have to play that on the 360. 
cool. If I can help you in with any of those ones and jump in with some co-op. Yeah. Well, the second one, yeah, has co-op. First one, I don't think has co-op yet. Yeah. So definitely we should try it out. Yeah, for sure. Okay, my next one is Lost Odyssey, developed by Mistwalker Studios and published by Microsoft Game Studio. This one came out in 2008. It is a turn-based JRPG. And I hear it has a system where you can make and combine rings and then like use them strategically in the battles. And I thought that sounds kind of cool. This one is backwards compatible and it has some DLC that has achievements connected to it. And that DLC is still available and it's pretty cheap too. So let's see here. A man without a past fights for a world without a future. From famed creator Hironobu Sakaguchi of Mistwalker comes a revolutionary RPG experience, rich in depth, emotion, and cinematic gameplay. In an age that has harnessed the dark power of magic, you are the mysterious immortal Kaim, on a quest to reclaim 1,000 years of lost memory. Surviving violent wars and encountering friends, lovers, and enemies, you will discover the true meaning of both sorrow and joy. There we have it. <laughs> Another dramatic RPG for me yeah. to embark upon. And I do think, and I we may have spoken about this before, but I think the developer of Lost Odyssey is also the developer of 99 Nights 2. Let's see, yeah, Field Plus, right? I think. Let me let me just double check. Yeah, Field Plus. So that's that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So, yeah. don't know if they're they're not different game style though, right? Play style. Yeah, so, I yeah. think so. I mean, you have the RPG or the Dynasty Warrior style. So yeah, yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah, it sure is. All right, last one for me at least uh, in this portion is Tenchu Z. This is an action adventure stealth game developed by K2 uh, and published by From Software in Japan in 2006. So it came out uh, there first, and then it was published by Microsoft elsewhere a year later in 2007. Uh, we only got a physical release over here. Uh, so this copy right here is complete. So that's awesome. Again, another game that I bought a long, long time ago. Still haven't played it yet though, but one I'm very excited to, uh, to jump into. And uh, on the back here it says, become the ultimate ninja assassin, master the ancient art of stealth. Which is exactly right up my alley, as you know. So yeah, I'm surprised you haven't played that one since you you do love your stealth games. Yeah, for sure. True. So this one is one I'll have to uh, jump into soon. And in uh, <laughs> this is also not backwards compatible. So I think all of the games that I showed today are not backwards compatible, unfortunately. But they're still, you know, if you have a 360, worth checking out, right? Yeah, for sure. Let's see, my last one is Spectral Force 3, developed by Expect Entertainment and published by Atlas. This one came out in 2008, so that was a big year for JRPGs on the 360. I guess they were really, uh, mm -hmm. really trying to get that RPG market. Um, this is a grid-based strategy game, and according to the trailer, it's the first strategy RPG to come to the 360. And I did actually test this one out when we bought it, and it drew me in right away. I actually mm -hmm. think this is a really good strategy RPG, and now I'm looking forward to like starting it for real and playing it through. So let's see. It says here at the top even, finally, a true SRPG for the Xbox 360. In the Neverland War, 10 nations are locked in a battle for domination. As leader of a band of mercenaries, you can choose to aid one kingdom or exploit them all. Uncover the secrets behind the raging conflict and the boy who could hold the key to everything. And that's right, I do think that this one has, sounds like it might have different endings to it possibly because it, uh, yeah, so it's like 150 different missions, you've got 40 unique warriors and it's sounds like there's yeah there's some depth to this one that i'm looking forward to yeah. and this one is not backwards compatible also darn it yeah you, you had a couple though at least you had a couple there lost odyssey and infinite yeah. undiscovery so mm -hmm. yep. um cool yeah 
Well, that is it for today. So join us Sunday for part two and click that bell if you want to be notified. And let us know in the comments if you played any of the games that we talked about today or if there are any other 360 games you want to start playing in 2024. Thank you so much for watching. And if you like our content, please like and subscribe. Bye.